Hey, did you hear about Barnaby? He's been eating three acai bowls a day and now the ladies are just like all over him. I actually laugh a little bit because acai bowls are not like really acai. I mean, they are, but there's so much sugar, so much granola, you're not getting the benefit. So I wanna just make sure that I come right out and say, do not watch the first 60 seconds of this video and think that you can go down to your local piggly wiggly and get a acai bowl and you're gonna be fine. It goes a little bit more in depth than that. I used to rain on the acai parade a lot uh, until I started understanding kind of the research behind it. Now, what makes acai berry so unique isn't the fact that it's, you know, this super antioxidant rich thing. It's the fact that it actually seems to get into the bloodstream. And I'll reference some research here in a minute. But what's making it more intriguing to me is the newer rodent model research that's coming out in terms of it being a good berry for the brain. I'm all about the brain, okay? So we'll talk about that in just a second. The cool thing with acai to begin with is when it's not overly saturated with sugar like it is in an acai bowl, it's actually a very like kind of dull berry. It doesn't have a whole lot of flavor, doesn't have a whole lot of sweetness. In a 100 gram serving, you've got like two grams of sugar and you got five grams of fat, which are actually a pretty decent fat too. So that's what gives it that buttery kind of smooth consistency, why it works so well in smoothies. But you always wanna get one that's unsweetened. Anyhow, what makes it so unique is the fact that it has a very high oxygen radical absorbency capacity. That means that it has a lot of capacity to neutralize free radicals. Now, its score is over a 15,000. To give you context, blueberries, which are touted as a super antioxidant rich berry, are only at 4,500. So we're 3x that of blueberries with significantly less sugar. So definitely better in that world. However, normally I kind of rain on the antioxidant like whole parade with berries to begin with because it doesn't A, get into your system that well. It's not super bioavailable. But I also think it's best to exercise and upregulate your body's own antioxidants. We have antioxidants in our body. I don't need a berry to do the work for me. If I take care of my body, then my body will upregulate superoxide dismutase. It'll upregulate glutathione. But when you look at the research with acai, it's cool. There's a study that was published in the Journal of Agriculture and Food Chemistry that took a look at 12 subjects and it gave them either acai pulp or acai juice or control. And it found that the acai pulp, not the juice, did drive up their antioxidant levels in their blood when they measured it afterwards, which is actually pretty rare. You don't see a marked increase uh, typically demonstrated. So the fact that that 15,000 ORAC score actually translated into something that was potentially bioavailable and digestible was very promising. That got me more interested in looking at the rodent model research that I had seen little glimpses about in the brain. So we'll get into that in just a second. And a lot of people do ask, what about like the freeze-dried acai? What about acai powder? Yes, you can still get a benefit from that because it's retaining the antioxidant component in like a freeze-dried or even spray-dried form. So like straight unsweetened acai powder can still be good or those little frozen sachets. Uh, I did put a link down below for Thrive Market. I do know for a fact that they have some acai powders on their uh, site. So I'll go ahead and I'll link them down below. But the link below that I'll put there first is a 25% off discount link for Thrive Market. So you don't just get acai powder from Thrive Market. They have thousands of different items. It's an online membership-based grocery store. So like if you're doing low carb or you're vegan or maybe you're paleo, it's allowing you to shop based upon how you eat. It's really, really interesting. And that link will save you 25% off your initial grocery order plus get a free gift. And then you wait a couple of days, it's at your doorstep. And they don't just have pantry staples, they actually have like sustainable meat and seafood options too. So you can virtually do your entire grocery shopping for generally less than what you would pay at most grocery stores and you never have to leave the house. It's pretty awesome. So that link is down below, 25% off and a free gift. And a big thank you to them for the continued support on this channel. So there are two studies that were published in the journal Nutrition Neuroscience, okay? The first one was talking about specific reductions in inflammation and reactive oxygen species within the hippocampus region of the brain in rodents in this case, and also in the prefrontal cortex. Now, generally speaking, in other research that I've seen, if you start to modulate inflammation within the hippocampus, you can see improvements in memory, you can see all things that are related to that. And the frontal cortex is associated with like logical 
forward thinking. So very promising stuff there. Now this same study also demonstrated that there was an improvement in what's called autophagy. Those of you that are veterans of my channel know I talk about autophagy a lot when it's related to intermittent fasting because it's the survival of the fittest components. And if it's happening in our brain, or in this case rodent brain, it is demonstrating that unused, sort of weak, decrepit components of cells, old organelles of cells are getting broken down and used as fuel for the cells that are thriving. Survival of the fittest, the weaker cells are getting broken down so that the stronger cells can thrive even more. So promising stuff there with the autophagy too that goes in line with that modulation of inflammation and increase of combating reactive oxygen species. Now the other study that was published in the same journal demonstrated that acai had promising effects at improving the cognitive function of older aging mice. So there's a lot of different things that could go on in an aging person, aging rodent, aging just organism altogether. So too many things to really list. But if acai is improving the cognitive function, then that's the main thing we're focusing on. What they've noticed in this case is less inflammation in the microglial cells. Now the microglial cells make up what is called kind of the immune system of the brain. The microglial cells combat the pathogens that may cross through the blood-brain barrier, and it's there as a very good thing. But if it's overactive, possibly in an aging brain, who knows, because of high levels of reactive oxygen species. So if there's a lot of reactive oxygen species, then the microglial cells within the brain are already just inflamed, and that could be causing other issues. So with this, we take it with a grain of salt, because we don't know that's necessarily going to apply directly into humans. But what we do know is that antioxidants are pretty darn good. And when they're actually absorbed and utilized, we might be getting a positive effect. So if we see this happening as getting into the bloodstream in humans, and we're seeing this potential effect positively in rodents, I think more research needs to be done, but it's very promising. And it's enough for me to start adding it into my diet because whether I am low carb or keto or anything, two grams of sugar per 100 gram serving acai is not gonna be affecting me in a negative way. I think it can only help. So as always, keep it locked to here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.